Hi, I'm Sarah from sarahkbrandiscontent.com. I'm weirdly sitting here in my doorway trying to get some breeze on one of the hottest days of the year. I can hear what sounds like thunder off in the distance, so hoping the storm comes our way because it's been baking here in London for days. Uh, also need to get this recorded quickly before it goes dark and thundery, <laughs> so um, let me get straight to the point. Today's video is a little marketing magic nugget on how to write a really well-structured blog post. And I think structure really is the key to making a post readable, and that's what you want. So in my last video, um, if you saw it, if not, just hop back and find it. I talked about how to write a really good title and um, a little SEO trick that I use for doing that. Of course, once you've got the title, you need the rest of your blog post. So um, I thought today I'd focus just for a few minutes on how to do a really good one. Um, if you go to my opt-in page to join my newsletter list, then not only do you get my weekly marketing magic tips, um, which is a recap of like my best videos from the week, that sort of thing, but you also get my blog post writing template and guide. So there's three pages to it. One is a guide that gives you instructions. Page two is an example of a really well-structured blog post so that you've got something like really tangible that you can follow. And then page number three is a template so you can just fill it in yourself. Um, and I do think like when you're new at something and you're staring at a blank Word document, it's that blank page that's so intimidating. So I feel like using a template takes away some of that intimidation really and makes it easier for you to get started um, but the simple thing that I want to teach you in this video about blog post structure is it's not too dissimilar from the essays you will have written at school and we've all done that so you can't say you don't know how to do it um, I remember my teacher explaining essay structure to me as introduction body and summary in the introduction you tell them what you're going to tell them in the body you tell them what you're telling them and in the summary you conclude what you've just told them so it opens up explains and then rounds off really nicely and that flow we're all used to it's familiar and i think um familiarity is very good in all areas of marketing because it gives you that feeling of cognitive resonance so when you experience something that's familiar it feels right to your brain so if a blog post has got a flow that we all are familiar with introduction body and summary Again, it's that nice familiar feeling of cognitive resonance. So um, yeah, so many reasons to stick to the formula. And um, the other thing to know about the structure or the formula, if you will, is that the body of the text is obviously the biggest, longest part. And the best thing you can do is break that up into small chunks, um, either using numbered points. So five ways to deal with the stress of a bad work day, break it up into five tips, or if it's not a listicle type blog post, if it's not five ways or three ways or whatever, if it's more of a story, more of a personal essay, then break your sections into subheadings. So give it, give it a little section as the story changes. Um, and the reason for that is because it, it looks less wordy that way. It chunks it down. Our brains deal with chunked down information much more readily. So it's less intimidating for the reader. It flows better. And also there are those people that don't read fully, but they will skim read and it helps the skim readers. So, so many reasons to do it that way. That's how I write all my blog posts. Um, if you want to get the blog posts planner and template and join my list for my weekly tips, I'll pop the link that you can use to join just in the comments below. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Bye for now.